thoughts along those lines of how we might be able to, because this, a lot of these things are just there and they've been there and yeah. continue to be there. And, uh, one of the things was that <clears throat> we'd ask them out to, uh, to show up, but if we don't show up, there's really little we can do to <laughs> force them here. Uh, I don't know that having them come here is going to, other than running a little public exposure, uh, what it might do to remedy the situation beyond that. Uh, on, on, the, on the last four, uh, we just sent one last week, the last one, but the three above that, we've sent those out certified mail they've never been signed for, never been picked up at the post office. So we, did, we don't know that the owner's ever really been notified. That's why we send them certified mail. Mm -hmm. But if we never get those green cards back, we don't know that they've been notified. Therefore, they don't contact us and we can't tell them to show up in front of you. So, <coughs> um, you know, we're, we're trying to follow what the unsafe building ordinance requires and is it, it, the notice the notice of record. And, and that's the only way we know that we've contacted, officially contacted them. We have the same issue with grass cutting all the time. If we send these out, and if it's the second one that you've sent because it's New Year, they know what it is by then and they don't pick it up. So, you know, when they do, when we do have ones that pick it up, then they usually contact us and we try, we try to work something out. We've got ones that have been on the list that it, for every one of those certified letters we send out, it's six dollars and seventy-eight cents. Yeah. So that's kind of Okay. Well, <clears throat> I think um, we ought to have a copy of the letter that we send for our file, at least. And if there's any changes in it, we ought to be that ought to be also a new letter copy be forwarded to us. There's really little more we can do. Question for Gary, if I may. Mm -hmm. Mike, for instance here, let's just say broken windows. Okay. Okay. We don't know okay. if they received the letters, but okay. the house still sits in that condition and has broken windows. And the city goes and boards it up. Is there any way that we put a lien against their property, some materials, and the man hours that it takes to fix that, to where it makes it safe for some off entry by other people that don't have any business being there? You do, but it's typically when they've been notified and they haven't taken action. But if you can't prove that they've been notified, I didn't know if there's a way. Then, then they can say, "I was never notified. Why do I have a lien?" Well, you know, uh, like it's like other cities. I've seen articles, and I showed one of the Gary. They put it in the paper and advertise. You know, like you got high grass, to take care of it, pay the bill. You know, I don't know how they get by with that, uh, how they enforce it, but they make it public knowledge, and actions taken, and a lien applied. So if we have to put a, a quotation or article in the paper, so and so that address in Brooklyn, when it's an unsafe building. Address to the public, make people aware of it, and city can go in and take care of that, mend it up. I think you might have to amend your unsafe building ordinance to council to allow that provision to take place. To, yeah, to address that, I think you would need to amend your current ordinance, but there is there are statutory schemes available that would allow you to move more quickly to a public notice type scenario that says, hey, here this is, this is notice that we're putting out to everyone if you have any interest in this property whatsoever. These are the issues that need addressed and you can move more quickly uh, into the, the lien process, uh, which is basically what you're asking. Is how, do we, how do we more quickly get to the point where our materials and what we have to do shows up as a hit on a title search that someone is gonna run there? That would be, the first step I believe would be an analysis of how your ordinance needs to change in order to accommodate. <coughs> I definitely think we need to address that because what we're doing now is not working. Like Gary says, we send out a letter, we spend money, 
and we don't know, we're not getting any replies, and then the building still sits there in its current condition, and nothing's being repaired or making it safe to the public. Would it make a difference if the letters were delivered by sheriff? Well, that uh, Mr. Hanger was also asking me that. Uh, it's, it's simply a different type of service. I mean, both of what you gentlemen are discussing are different types of services. One would be a service by publication, one would be a service by sheriff. The, the difference would be if we had a service by a sheriff, we could then have an affidavit of service that says, I delivered that to them, um, which, again, would be more than sufficient to qualify for the necessary due process requirements. So you could, you could certainly go that route. That would work if they lived here, or if they're living that's, there. That, that's <laughs> right. You've got a lot of <coughs> repossessions, and you've got out-of-state mortgage hold, you know, companies. Okay, everybody on our list, we've got their supposed mailing address. I mean, it's, you know, it's a small enough community that most people know a lot of these Yeah. For, in a lot of these, that's true. I, in the one the case... address the property address. <coughs> um, um, yeah. That's true. Um, I will say that, if, if I may, I will say in my experience, um, the personal service by a sheriff is does have a greater deterrent effect than a certified letter. I mean, when somebody has a police officer standing on their doorway, they like to know. So that's just my personal experience. Okay. Um, <clears throat> other comments or suggestions, thoughts? <clears throat> I, I'm going to make a very probably unpopular comment, but I have I have a problem with addressing a broken window on these abandoned houses when we have a four-story structure with a gaping hole in the roof and it's been there for over a year. And I think that's a very unsafe structure. And I've said that more than once. And with what happened at the plate building, you know, I have some real concerns about that because we still have yet to see that moving in a direction where anything they were up there last week. There's an officer on the sidewalk that they're working on. Now it's <coughs> you're right Tom it has taken a long time. In comparison it's it's up the broken windows minor and then compared to that. Which really brings us to the other piece of point B here on the agenda downtown building structural requirements. One of the things that um, it's, I did a little investigation. I don't have a lot of information yet. <clears throat> I don't know that I'll ever have a lot of information. But um, requiring an engineering study is a little much. Um, there could be some ways in which we could make some incentives for people to do that. There are, um, I'm told, uh, models and other um, city ordinances, other locations that have what they call a minimum maintenance in general terms, uh, ordinance or requirements. Um, <clears throat> and that might be something that would address part of what we're talking about here too in terms of follow up on that ordinance. Um, I don't know what you all think, but it might be worthwhile to have the uh, city engineer, uh, city staff, maybe Scott's got some insight or some uh, ways to, to get some information uh, to bring to us to look at that kind of thing. Uh, particularly, um, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at it from the standpoint of all structures, not necessarily or not only uh, the downtown, all that is a, a high priority, I would think. Um, but there are lots of places, I think, uh, in and around the city where um, buildings have begun to deteriorate one way or another. Um, maybe not to the point of completely unsafe, but <coughs> um, they do present a problem of negligence, the problem of um, creating a problem within the community, within that neighborhood at least. And if that's something that we might want to take a look at and uh,
do kind of some due diligence on moving it up the chain for city council. I don't know what, what's people's thought about about that. <clears throat> Again, it's it's difficult because you got to find the right balance. Uh, you know, one one person's um, <coughs> manicured lawn is another person's job <coughs> because that's what they want to see. they like to see nature at its peak, so to speak. Mr. Tebby, can yes. Uh, I applaud you for what you just said, and I understand about all throughout the city, but historic buildings are a little bit different than a lot of the structures are. And a lot of times, if you're dealing with historic building structural engineers, have you ever thought about maybe putting out a letter or whatever to some of these that are experienced in these older buildings and telling them you'd like to perhaps take bids, see if you can acquire some free information from some of these engineers by coming to your meeting and telling them the problems that we're experiencing in that downtown area and just getting various input and then deciding as a board what might be the best way to pursue. And just as a for instance too, the structural engineer that I talked to that has the historic building experience, he said on that Franklin comprehensive they are doing that they did acquire some grant monies in order to proceed with that so you know I think there's some options there it okay. just needs a little bit of exploring all right uh, commission members what's your reaction or thoughts shall we pursue something along this line sure or is it or is it, are we just going to be spinning our wheels <coughs> I'm all in favor of pursuing it and see what we come up with. I mean, right now we don't know what's out there. We've not really ever looked at this. I can't think that a lot of those older buildings are getting any better, the, especially the area. <coughs> yeah. Well, I, I think downtown is probably a high priority on our list, but uh, and it may be, and the minimum maintenance thing could be designated in certain areas, I suppose. It wouldn't have to be to what I'm just saying. That it's, that's not the only place where I think that could be of service. Um, other thoughts? Kevin? Move forward with something. Okay, well, we will do that. We will um, talk to our city um, employees to do, get some investigations going with, with that. regard to that. I will have to do a little um, inquiries myself and see what we can bring back here in July for at least a first go around of looking at some models and uh, we may pursue uh, see if there's somebody else that could come in and give us a, uh, an insight uh, with regard to this issue. Yes ma'am. One more thing uh, I, I think it would do the board good benefit it, I'm not quite there yet with the processing of the video from last night's Board of Works meeting but I think it exhibits the problem, and it's the building that you were just referring to. But Mr. Douglas from Melody Mart was at last night's meeting, and it's, it would be, I think, beneficial for the board to hear the interaction of his comments and what he had to say about the situation that he's experiencing right now. Okay. Okay. Um, anything else on, on the unsafe building um, topic? Board members, commission members, John, Tom, Mike, Mike, Kevin, Bruce. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Turney, anything either? All right. Um, are there any other items that need to come before this meeting? This board? I, just have a, I have a question. You guys, you've tasked us with looking at minimum maintenance requirements, which would address downtown. Are you looking? To have the attorney look at your unsafe building ordinance and the notice provisions. Yeah. Also yes. to <clears throat> I think propose that some language that this body would then bring that amended. Or I, I think those have to be looked at in tandem. But yes. Yeah. I do want. I do want to take a look at that. Okay. But I was thinking that our, our main, minimum maintenance thing might be something that we would do first because that may fit in harmony or not. So uh, that was, I mean, he, I, I'm pretty sure you could find some language and we could 
look up some minimum maintenance things. Yeah, I think I, basically so you don't have to continuously reinvent the wheel, uh, I do think that these can be harmonious ordinances and to the extent we have to change them, you know, we can do those in one fell swoop. I am familiar with some, some minimum maintenance uh, language that's out there additionally. Uh, there is, this is also a very hot topic in front of the state legislature currently. Uh, and so I know it's being debated yeah. about how, how well, cities has got some other kind of things in it too. They're it, looking at a lot, of, a lot more licensing, a lot more things than what we're talking about. Yes, yes, much yeah. more extensive than what yeah. you're talking about. Yeah, but I can certainly work with the city engineer and, yeah. and the other city, the other department heads to go over something. What Chris is referring to is that there's kind of a moratorium on things. So. We may not even be able to do a whole lot, depending on the interpretation. I I see it more as, I didn't look at the final bill, but I thought it was more in terms of uh, not change, not making additional requirements for landlords. Right. And I don't know how that affects um, what we're looking at here. So. I kind of, I, I actually talked to the author of that bill because I had sent Representative Fry kind of a nasty dream talking about it because they were basically putting moratoriums on any type of, uh, of fines or fees. Mm -hmm. And so he cooked me right up with uh, <coughs> that person. You and, talked to Representative Speedy then. Yes, <laughs> yes. Yeah. And, uh, and ultimately, in most cases, all they're doing, they're not saying you can't do stuff. You just can't charge a fee. If you know, if Blake's the property owner, I can't. We as the city can't enact a fee of a hundred dollars for us now to go do this minimum maintenance inspection for us to, check. For mm -hmm. us to go, you know, to, to, to fund what we're trying to do. That that's the main thing that okay. this had. Now, again, as you said, they've added. You know, everybody that had anything to do with buildings has now tagged that on to yeah. and it looks like some kind of a sixteen-legged creature. Well, but, but that, that was the main thing was right. the, the fee itself. This will not be something that we're going to rush through. Um, and we may, it may be a little deliberate here on our part. Uh, the problem's been around a while. We'll try and address it in a deliberate manner, but um, we won't have to fix it overnight. Um, and by the time we get ready, maybe they'll have sorted some things out and we'll have a web picture of things. Is there anything that Needs to come before the city council or the uh, members of the commission wish to bring the topic to the floor. If not, um, is there anybody else in the community that wishes to address this commission? If not, gentlemen, we are adjourned. <coughs>